This is Michael Popak with Illegal AF Hot Take. Donald Trump's not the only one that's put himself up for sale to any investor, foreign or domestic, because he's financially compromised on the balls of his backside and has let the world know that he can be had for a price, along with, I expect, foreign policy if he ever returns to office. That brings us to the sordid tale, the ethically compromised Jared Kushner, Donald Trump's uh, uh, current son-in-law and former uh, advisor to the president, along with his wife, Ivanka. We've never seen corruption or ethics violations at this level in our history. Um, upon Immediately upon leaving office, within just 90 days, Jared Kushner was able to raise an immediate $2 billion from the Saudi private investment fund, fund the PIF, under the expressed approval, with the expressed approval of it, the leader of Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, the person who all U.S. intelligence has confirmed is responsible for the uh, terrible, um, violent uh, death of Jamal Khashoggi, an American citizen and reporter for the Wall Street Journal, who was literally cut into pieces by Saudi security forces. Jared Kushner literally has taken blood money because MBS approved the $2 billion investment in his fund over objections by the private investment fund, the PIF's own board and advisors, who said they had grave doubts about the company's experience or lack of experience and about uh, Jared Kushner's lack of experience in investing and with no proven track record. Despite that, MBS said, Jared Kushner, son-in-law of a president, somebody who could go back into office, we'll take it. And they invested $2 billion. Now, since then, every, and I mean every dollar that Jared Kushner's fund, the Affinity Fund, has taken in up to $3 billion has come not only from foreign sources, that's, that's a given, as the foreign policy of a Trump future presidency is literally being sold before our very eyes. But every one of the investments came from a country or people for which he, Jared Kushner, was responsible and covered while he was a presidential advisor. This was his territory, the Gulf Arab states. He made it his remit. And then as soon as, I mean, literally the door had just slammed on him leaving, right? It, the, the tracks were freshly freshly made and he made $2 billion and now $3 billion of investment into the affinity only from countries and people that he had a relationship with while he was, while he was a presidential advisor. Forget about this phony impeachment analysis uh, of Joe Biden about Hunter Biden making, you know, $3 million over several years of the board of Burisma in Ukraine. That's that's peanut money. That's pocket money. Even if, even if that were true, that Hunter made that much. Do you know how much Jared Kushner is making on a yearly, year over year basis, just on management fees as an alleged investment advisor? Just that, without even getting to any return on the investment. If his fund does well or even makes a dollar, he makes forty million dollars a year, year over year for basically doing nothing other than trading trading on his relationship building while his father-in-law was president and maybe is going to return. Look, I'd be less hot and bothered if like Trump wasn't running for office again. But what we're watching is foreign policy for sale. Donald Trump's already will be, if he somehow finds a way back to the White House and we allow that to happen, the most financially compromised uh, president subject to, of course, being turned by foreign assets, being bribed, we've ever seen. And now his son-in-law is a prime example. Sure, Jared Kushner takes the convenient position that he's not going back to the White House with his father. But does anybody think that uh, despite him growing a beard and moving to Miami, that the reason that people are investing in Jared Kushner is because his name is Jared Kushner? Or is it because he's the son-in-law of a person they are betting on and banking on will be back in the White House and they'll have influence over 
foreign policy. We're watching the sale of foreign policy. In fact, Ben Rhodes, an advisor for Barack Obama in a recent interview, said exactly that. Let's take a listen. Thank you for being here with me. Um, as you look at it from a sort of foreign policy perspective, how does Kushner's entanglement with someone like MBS compromise potentially, I don't know, the foreign policy platform of his father-in-law who's running to be the next president of the United States? Well, in a word, entirely, Alex. I mean, look, this is not subtle corruption that we're looking at. Um, this is a guy, Jared Kushner, who had no expertise, no qualification whatsoever to be in the White House. While he was there, he made it his account to work in the Gulf Arab states. He basically l helped lead the cover up for MBS, get him in from the cold after the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Um, and look, the Saudis didn't make a $2 billion investment because they trusted in Jared Kushner's investment expertise. <laughs> Do they, does anybody in the world believe that that $2 billion is based on an assessment that Jared Kushner is who you want to give your money to, uh, to make a return? No, they're making an investment on what they think he can do for them if there is a second Trump term. And basically what we can take from that investment is that in a second Trump term, U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East and around the world will be made entirely with the interests of Mohammed bin Salman in mind. Let me take let me take you through how Jared Kushner supposedly makes his forty million dollars a year, a year before even having made an investment, just off the money management as a percentage of the money management, all disclosed in an SEC form filing. We have a copy of it. The form ADV for an investment advisor. Um, reflects all this for his affinity partners. Now, he's made investments, finally, in year two of some of the money, again, only in countries and with people and entities for which he had a relationship only because he was in the White House, trading on the White House, selling future potential foreign policy, like it's some sort of futures market on the stock exchange. He's invested in Dubai, a place he covered it was part of his remit as a special advisor to the president. In Abu Dhabi, same thing. In Israel, okay. In Germany, um, and in other places. So all the money he's taken up in up to $3 billion is only from investors uh, from countries in which he was already responsible as allegedly a representative of the American people sworn to uphold our constitution. And then you've got the investments that are being made similarly only there, not in American companies. This isn't, let me make this clear. Make America great again. Make America great again by taking in $3 billion of Saudi, uh, United Arab Emirates, um, and other money, and Kuwaiti money, money, and investing it in other countries. None of the countries that I just described, this uh, Israeli, Israeli car leasing company, this Dubai real estate investment company, this Abu Dhabi fast food company that owns fast food chains in Brazil is helping Americans. This is that dirty little secret. If Donald Trump was a man of the people and his family were too, they were trying to make America great again instead of trying to make my bank account as large as possible again. These investments wouldn't be, the money would be from Americans. Maybe some of these billionaires that just gave Donald Trump $50 million in some flashy Mar-a-Lago fundraiser because they're trying to buy a financially compromised candidate. Might as well. They've got everything else at the billionaire. They own the $150 million mansions. They own the islands. They have the 500-foot yachts. They own every plane imaginable. They have homes all around the world. What else? What else What else can I put up on my shelf? Donald Trump. I own him too. And I've been around these people in my career. That's how they talk. And so they put him up on the... And Jared Kushner, let's take Jared Kushner too, because he's looking for a buck. But I want to make this clear. Not one dollar that has come into the Affinity Fund controlled by Jared Kushner. This $40 million blood money that he's earned off of it. And the investments that he's making help every day Americans, it's not helping you at the gas pump. It's not helping you uh, while you're while you're at the supermarket shopping for you know milk and eggs and bread. It's helping Jared Kushner build a bigger house in uh, Indian Creek in Miami. It's helping 
his wife, Ivanka, buy another gown, hang out with another famous person, right? Take another picture of herself and put it on Instagram. That's what you're paying for, as long as you know. We want to share an important message from our sponsor, Americans United for Separation of Church and State. Oklahoma recently approved the nation's first religious public school. Justice Sotomayor warned in her Carson v. Macon dissent that this Supreme Court continues to dismantle the wall of separation between church and state that the framers fought to build. We've documented that assault here on the Legal AF Pod. This religious public school in Oklahoma is the latest Christian nationalist test case. They convinced a handful of political appointees to create the nation's first religious public charter school, a blueprint for other conservative states to follow. Americans United for Separation of Church and State recognized the danger and promptly filed a lawsuit to stop St. Isidore of Seville Catholic Virtual School in Oklahoma. AU says that this is the latest effort to blur the lines between church and state. AU believes taking tax money and directing it to a religious school that will indoctrinate students in one particular faith and plans to discriminate against students, families, and staff who don't adhere to its beliefs goes against the founding principles of our country. Americans United will keep fighting for freedom without favor, equality without exception. Keep up with this issue at au.org slash legal AF. That's au.org slash legal AF. Now look at this. Let's take the plane up 5,000 feet. Look back down and what this means. And the most and one of the things I must have missed in the earlier reporting and kind of putting this story together for this hot take is the role of Mohammed bin Salman who is the evil leader of Saudi Arabia, effectively, who gave the green light to chop Jamal Khashoggi, the Washington Post reporter, and uh, U.S. citizen into little pieces in, co- in collaboration with another one of our uh, frenemy countries. Okay, He gave the direct order to hit over the objection of his private investment fund, the Saudi PIF, that has 62 billion dollars to invest around the world. It's the same organization, the PIF, that's trying to figure out how to buy American golf, how to buy the PGA effectively, and all of the golfers associated with it for Live Golf. Same company, PIF. Even they, as corrupt as that country is, the PIF is by extension, even they were, the board was like, hmm, Uh, Jared Kushner has absolutely no experience in running a fund, has no track record in making investments. We have serious concerns about him. Unsatisfactory, there are many, uh, this is their quote, unsatisfactory aspects of the company. And and a lack of inexperience gives us pause. And all Mohammed bin Salman heard was Jared Kushner, Trump, Donald Trump could get reelected. Approved. And we're not just talking like a couple of shekels here. We're talking like approved $2 billion. Effectively, if we're doing the math, you know, it's about, um, I don't know, one and a half percent ish of their fund total went to Jared Kushner. And now he's raised other money on the backs of that. Always from frenemies of the Americans, places that he covered while he was special assistant to the president making money in the grift while in office. And I, like I said earlier in the hot take, I would feel slightly differently if the Trump family and their caravan moved away and never were to return to the White House. What's done is done. They're not the first family to ever try to make money on the backs of having been the president or in the White House. Everybody does it one way or the other. Speeches at two, three hundred, a million, uh, two hundred thousand a pop, a million a pop. Books for thirty, forty million dollar advances. Boards of director positions for hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. They've all done it. Clinton, Obama, um, you know, Reagan, Bush, but the other Bush. They all did it. They all do it. But like this, this is this is a grand theft auto in plain sight. This is like us standing back and watching as, you know, Jared Kushner and his family took sledgehammers to the Tiffany window and grabbed all the diamonds. That's where we're at right now. And I want to bring it to your attention on hot takes like this one. Foreign policy for sale, president presidency for sale. So when people are making their decisions about who they want to put in the White House, oh, I don't want the old guy. I don't know which one that is. They both are. 
But don't you want the old guy who's not corrupt? Don't you want the old guy whose family is not taking in money from people who are barely our allies, who were responsible for 9-11 and all? Let's, let's not go. 20 years ago, Saudi Arabia, it was already established by by uh, our, um, you know, our uh, intelligence community that they funded and and supported and indirectly helped plan 9-11. That Saudi, but now, oh, you want to open up a bunch of fast food chains in Brazil? Let's do it. $3 billion, please. This is a family that's corrupt. This is a family that does not care about Americans, average or otherwise. They only care about themselves. And they won't stop until we stop them. They will not stop. This is a kleptocracy. It was a kleptocracy when he was in office. We throw a lot of adjectives on the Trump presidency. It's fascistic. It's terroristic. It's stochastic terrorism. It's it's on the road to nationalism. It's it's borderline. You know, the American first is borderline. Um, you know what what uh, Charles Lindbergh was leading in this country during the, the during the forties, right? This close to socialism slash fascism. Yes. It's also a kleptocracy. They were busy stealing everything that wasn't nailed down, and they're continuing to do it. I'll bring it to your attention right here. I don't blow smoke or sunshine. I do it on the Midas Touch Network, and I also do it on a podcast we call Legal AF. Yes, it's what you think, especially after I just gave you that analysis. Uh, Join us on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. You'll find out why we call it Legal AF. If you like what I'm doing, I'm Michael Popak. You can can help me. It's not ego. It just keeps me on the air. Thumbs up, leave a comment. It really does. It signals to the, I don't know who, the algorithmic gods at YouTube that you like this kind of content and I'll continue to bring it to you. If you like what I'm doing, go over to the Midas Touch YouTube channel, free subscribe, get them to 3 million and then look for Michael Popak under playlists, under my name or contributors. And you'll see 12, 1300 of hot takes just like this one. And then for those that really want to go to the next level, get a master's in all of this, uh, Legal AF set up a Patreon account at patreon.com slash Legal AF, where I do exclusive content. It's like a TED Talk meets a law school class. But uh, we bring it you know, right to everybody's level so that it's, it's both enjoyable and educational. It helps you with the building blocks of what we discuss on Legal AF and on hot takes like this one. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, until my next Patreon exclusive video, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legalaf. That's patreon.com slash legalaf.